Hey you, it's good to see you back if you haven't been here before. I am Bobby Jean. So at this point you're probably wondering, where you been? I uh, took a little time off, took me a little vacation, went up to the Carolinas and North Georgia mountains uh, to visit my son and daughter-in-law who used to live here, if you've been following the videos, and uh, my grandkids, Braden and Braxton. And so I'm back and trying to get things back on the road here. So I've got something here still in the box. I think you're gonna love it. So let's get right to it, roll the intro. So this is the Barla Pegasus, city commuter. It's an electric scooter, but probably not like the one you remember. This is a dual motor electric scooter people mover. Combined, the dual 500 watt motors delivers 1600 watts of max power output from a 48 volt 15.6 amp hour built in battery. It can transport you about 28 miles at around 28 miles per hour. Although this one easily does 30 miles per hour. It sports three and a half inch wide solid fat tires. That's right, solid means no flats. The barn comes with dual disc brakes. Each wheel is equipped with mechanical disc brakes. Each wheel also has dual swing arm suspension, which absorbs the bumps and ensures a smooth ride. For extra visibility, it is equipped with a front LED headlight and a rear brake tail light. The aluminum and magnesium alloy riding platform above the battery housing is nice and wide and it supports up to 280 pounds. It's covered with a thick silicone grip pad. The handlebar riser can be unlocked and then folded down for transport or storage. In the center is your LCD display. It's nice and big with easy to read text and symbols. They show you your power bar at the top, your speed, your power assist levels, voltage use, watts, and odometer. On the left side of the handlebar, you have in front of you the main power switch. Press and hold this down will turn on the bike, as well as the display. Tap the power button to cycle through the various display modes, and then tap the up and down buttons to adjust the amount of power assist you desire. And of course, next to the power switch, you have one of these. On the right side, next to the hand grip, is the throttle. Pressing this with your thumb makes you go. So you might be curious about dimensions, price, and other details. Well, heading over to the Varla Pegasus website, we can see they currently list it for $1,099. From what I've been told, they frequently offer discount coupons, so check back regularly if you are interested in the product. It's free shipping, two-year warranty, and scrolling down here, we can see that they give it a waterproof rating of IP54. And it comes in at about 66 pounds. Taking a look at the geometry here, we can see it's 49.6 inches in height. The folded height is 18.9 inches. And the overall length is 49.4 inches. You know, there's only one thing left to do.
I gotta take this off, too hot. All right, we got the GoPro going here. We're going to, hopefully it's pointing the right direction. Uh, we're gonna start off in power level one here and see what our top speed is. Here's our acceleration. It's nice and smooth. Tops right out here at 19 clicks. 19.5 clicks. Smooth and level sidewalk. Let's go to power level two here. And thirty three, thirty four, thirty four clicks. Power level three here. Fifty clicks. Okay, let's try this again. Power level three. All right, once again. Once again, that's power level three, and again, we hit uh, 50. We're into the wind that time, so I'm gonna try it this way. <clears throat> and I'm gonna bend down a little bit. All right, once again, that was 50 clicks. Let's see if I can point you down more so I can show you. Show you the stance on the platform. Uh, you're gonna want either your right foot or your left foot up front. And then the back foot is gonna be braced up against this little ramp. That helps you by keeping your knees slightly bent, that helps you absorb the energy as you accelerate forward abruptly. And you keep your knees flexed and then as you brake hard, you're gonna squat a little bit and lean back. And that keeps you steady on the platform. Uh, you never wanna stand on this, ride it with your feet side by side, it, it's much more unstable. You'll want to always keep your hands on the T-bar. This is made to be ridden with both hands on the T-bar. It's easy to lose control if you take a hand off. It gets a little wobbly. So if you want to take a hand off to wave or signal which direction you're turning, use your foot. <laughs> the uh, maneuverability on the sidewalk is good. You just kind of, like, it's like riding a bicycle um, as far as the physics go and how you counter steer and lean into it as you turn. The wheels are much smaller than a bike, so the responsiveness is super quick. So you don't want to oversteer or overcorrect. The steering doesn't feel too loose and squirrely. And I like that they had that dampening in it. If that was loose, you could easily overcorrect and lose control. And the sidewalk is hard. It's just as hard as the road. So you don't want to hit it. <clears throat> all right, all of that riding we've been doing today and here's how much power we've used. Not bad at all. 18 kilometers of testing. Let's head back in and talk about it. So I really wanted to experience this e-scooter because well, I'm really curious. I see them everywhere. I'm trying to figure out why they're so popular. And now I get it. It's an inexpensive way to get away from public transportation if that's what you do. You know, if you take the bus or the train or whatever to get to work or run errands in these strange times. It's portable. It folds down. You can slide it into your car. You can slide it into your RV. Uh, you can fold it, put it, store it out of the way at home. 
It's quick, it's maneuverable, but really most of all, it's fun. It is just stupid fun. I could do this all day, zipping around. It is a ball. I particularly chose this model because it kind of falls into that middle ground uh, when it comes to the different makes and the models and what they offer and everything. You know, you just throw a lot of money at it, 15, 18, $2,000 and have hydraulic brakes and beat up suspension where you take it off road. You know, this guy is mainly made for commuting, get it zipping around, having fun. For the quality of build, the things that it does offer, the dual disc brakes with the, the lighting and the, the good range and me riding it personally and going over the same from top to bottom and the end, I can see that it's built well, it's good, good quality parts and nothing is flimsy. And, because something like this, if you're gonna do 30 miles an hour, down the side of the road, out there with the rest of the traffic, you want to want to make sure that you're riding something that's dependable and the parts are reliable, things are going to fall off and break and send you flying. Anything I would change or do have done differently on this model, probably the headlight up front. I don't like its location where it's at. It gets in the way of when you fold the handlebar down, the latch can hit it and break it off, which I did. I had to glue it back and until I order another one or I don't know what I'm going to do with it. but. If that headlight was more powerful and mounted up near the handlebars, I think that would be more out of the way and not be so prone to uh, running into things when you put it in a car, an SUV, or whatever. Also, the light when you turn the T-bar, the handlebars, uh, it doesn't turn with the handlebars. It's fixed on a, the part of the frame that doesn't move. So having it mounted higher up on the T-bar and the light moves as you turn, I think would be uh, a better design. And if you heard in the video, like right here. Let's go to power level two here. And that is one of the disc brakes scrubbing on the disc. Uh, it, I examined it. There's an ever so slight bend in the disc. Probably got bent in shipping. Not a big deal. You can bend that back, but you probably heard it, it was pretty pronounced that, that scuffing noises as we can go faster there, you can hear it pretty good. Lastly, it weighs uh, 66 pounds. So if you don't have a problem picking up and putting 66 pounds into a trunk of a car or an SUV or your RV, it won't be a problem. But if it's a little much for you, you might have to get one end up there, load it and then pick up the back end and push it in or get another person to help you out. So anyway, that's all I got for you. I appreciate you being here and watching this video. If you've made it this far, I hope I've earned your subscription. And if you would just take a moment and please consider just clicking that like button for me down there. It means the world to YouTube and it helps me out a lot, supports the channel. I don't have Patreon and all of those stuff. I just ask for you to like it, please. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Love to see you come back. We're a great family here. We have pop luck. You know, we, have, we play volleyball. We play, uh, we have a, what's that, card game we, we get together for. No, we really don't do all that. But wouldn't it be great if we could? Anyway, thank you for watching. Be sure to check back and tune in for more therapy. Oh, one last thing I forgot. If you do decide that you want to pick up one of these little scooters, don't forget to use this code. Additional 50 bucks off. You're welcome.